Okay, so let's get started with the coffee first and this is my iced coffee for today. Actually the second one because the first video that I filmed this one was all blurry. Like I can't even believe that until now I don't manage to get the focus right sometimes. Well, but I think that it is wonderful because it is the right time as today I was going to talk about building a coping kit of your own for anxiety and stress. And recently, like in those past few weeks, I've been uh, experiencing anxiety like I do from time to time, not like an attack or something like that, but that general one that you have from time to time. And I have also experienced that in those past years for several reasons and because it was a certain phase of my life. But we all do, right? On a regular basis, there are times when we are uh, afraid of being judged or there are other situations that don't go as expected and then you feel like wow what to do now what to do from here onwards so anyway today i wanted to talk about this coping kit which you can build for yourself and the idea here is to have a kit of your own that you will use in moments of distress when your emotions are escalating and you feel like it is a situation where you will not be able to handle that situation without having proper tools and resources that you can use in those times. In a moment when you are feeling more relaxed and mentally more uh, reasonable in your decisions like you are a lot more relaxed and in a pe peaceful state of mind that is when you build this coping kit that you will use whenever you are facing such situations that are stressful and difficult. These items or these tools and resources, they can be of course those tools, resources, exercises, but they can also be physical things and other sensory objects. So in today's video, first of all, I will go through what's the importance of having a coping kit for yourself and uh, after that once i have talked about the importance of having a coping kit i will walk you through my own sensory kit that i use and that i will be using actually in those coming months since we are approaching fall and fall and winter is a time that people consider or can it can be perceived as a depressive time of the year because there is a lot less sun depending on which area of this world you live in. At the same time, after that, I will be giving you three different techniques that you can use in order to um, deal with your anxiety. And these are techniques that I personally use and I have actually created my own Notion template with those tools. And whenever I feel triggered or I feel that I'm feeling anxious and not relaxed enough, I go to that and I start feeling in it and it helps me move forward instantly within a few minutes, feel better and actually make sense of the situation which is difficult when you are anxious. And after that, lastly, we will be going through five different tips that I will give you to manage your stress better. And stress is something that I think that I manage quite well because I managed to categorize my life in those different um, categories like uh, career, work, home, family and uh, other such stuff like creativity, YouTube, stuff like that. But anxiety is something that I feel is way more problematic than that. First of all, I will maybe start off by my iced coffee because in terms of taste, this is something that brings me a lot of peace. Okay, so getting started with why do you need a coping kit? The thing is that when you are facing a stressful situation or an anxiety inducing situation, you do not manage to make sense of uh, how things are. You do not manage to take a step back and look at the situation realistically or in a reasonable way and then um, have and respond to it in a nice way, you know, or even react, but react in a proper way, which is not too aggressive or maybe not too passive either. For example, if you have a friend who is facing a certain situation, that person will have difficulty making sense of the situation, whereas, whereas you are going to be able to give them some advice and some uh, tips to deal with that situation effectively and in the same way when you are in the middle of a situation it's a lot harder for you to make sense and think 
uh, reasonably in that time and it is very important for you to have your own tools techniques and resources that you can use and you you can you can go towards to find some fees to find some patience to make sense of things and actually to get out of those, those situations stronger every single time and that is the idea on this channel I inspire women to become stronger to excel in their lives and whether you are in your 30s 40s 50s no matter what kind of past you have you can always start taking steps for towards a better emotional management to a, a more confident style and attitude overall and uh, towards becoming more productive and improving yourself at all times so i think that it is it is very close to my heart because i find that it is very important for women to be inspired from each other and to empower each other so if you are interested in those topics please subscribe to my channel and i post videos every monday and thursday so Let's get started with this one. Um, another thing that I really wanted to talk about is that it has been clinically proven, like you can search it on internet. I actually did my research. That's why I'm saying that it has been clinically proven that having a coping toolkit for yourself is something that has many mental and physical and even spiritual benefits. In terms of the mental benefits, you feel a lot less depressed, you feel a lot more energized, a lot more concentrated and focused and uh, you also have this tendency of getting your sleep much better. You have a tendency to feel restful also at times because it takes a lot of energy for you to face stressful situations and then to maybe react in a way that you will be regretting afterwards. And uh, this is, of course, energy consuming. And instead of giving your energy to that, when you give your energy to creating this toolkit for yourself and use it whenever you need it, then it works much better. So what is a sensory toolkit? In psychology and even in coaching, it is recommended for you to have a toolkit that you can use for all of your senses from sight to hearing to smell and every single thing, you know, and that's why I talked about once again, my coffee, like I said, is something that brings me this kind of energy. And of course, there are people who uh, like tea, whether it is green tea, whether it is, it is some other sort of infusion or whether it is chai, like I absolutely love drinking chai. Another thing that I do use is eye mask, a cold eye mask, you know, a, that cold eye mask is also something that brings peace to your eyes and that freshens you up and having said that moving towards the sense of touching what is it that brings you that sensation of um, of peace of calm and that helps you move forward so for me it is apart from this of course right now but for me it is also having a cold eye mask and putting that kind of eye mask on your eyes is something that is extremely peaceful calming and you feel so much more refreshed afterwards but that's not enough and if you have also other things for other senses it's extremely important to have that and here i would like to combine the senses of sight um, hearing and also smell and whenever i feel way too stressed or anxious one thing that i do is to head outdoors and go into the nature and take a walk and that brings a lot of peace to my body to my senses listening to all those sounds that are so calming whether it is the birds whether it is the nature whether it is the river or having those smells also from the nature which are very soothing and calming i don't know about you but it is something that really brings me a lot of peace and also by going outdoors you are actually changing the entire scenario around you so that also helps in getting a fresh perspective and getting back home and looking at situations from a different perspective that's absolutely helpful in terms of hearing one thing i wanted to add is that if you do not have that opportunity of heading outdoors and you do not have that kind of scenery outside you can also listen to those sounds on youtube that are extremely helpful I used to listen to them when it was winter because you do not always have this opportunity of staying outdoors and uh, you do not want to sometimes. So it's also a good idea to listen to something on YouTube and there are many different sounds. The ones that I like most is the rain sound because whether it is in real life, whether it is on YouTube, I find that to be extremely, extremely soothing to my souls. And lastly, if you also need a quick boost, 
honestly listening to that one song that brings you that kind of boost adds some confidence to uh, your your approach towards life so why not have that also in your coping toolkit and now let's move on towards the three techniques that you can use to uh, calm down your anxiety to relieve yourself from your anxiety and anxiety being different in different situations it needs to be also tackled differently depending on the situation that you are in so most of the time if i feel that i'm overreacting and uh, all I need is simply to brain dump, like to write down every single thing on a paper and get that out of my head so that I start making sense of situations after all. Like it is simply because I am exploding with too much information or too much overthinking and all I need is simply to write it down and get it get everything out of my system. In that case, brain dump is perfect to do. So that is the number one tool that you can use and that is brain dumping on a paper every single thing that is coming to your mind, getting that out of yourself and then you can burn that paper if that is something that is too uh, difficult for you to handle or otherwise you can simply throw it away and just get rid of it like that. And the second tool I have here is extremely uh, powerful. It is used in therapy in general. I learned about it on the internet called CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. And it is about reframing your thoughts in a way that they are not negative and disempowering but instead making sense of that situation and and reframing your thoughts in a way that they become more energizing for you and instead of dragging you down they help you uh, uplift yourself every single time and for that i have created my own template that i was talking about earlier so i will share that template a link to that notion template in the description of this video you can go and check that out and use it for yourself if that is something that helps you but you will find many different ways of doing that on the internet as well this is something that suits me it is all about the situation i would simply describe the situation and then i talk about the feelings that it gives me and in order to do that in a good way i have also added uh, an image of all of the feelings it is called the the wheel of feelings i think and I have added that to my template as well so that even though I do not have a word for my feeling, I can just go and check out and see which one describes best what I am feeling. Then I move towards the next step, which is to go towards the source of this feeling and this thought that is coming to your mind. Where is it coming from? What was the When was the first time you um, gave this kind of meaning to this situation, to the incident that happened to you? And after that, you reframe that and you create evidence to prove your first thought wrong or that disempowering thought. You have to create evidence in order to prove that wrong. And either you already have that evidence and if you do not have that, then start creating it now because that is going to be extremely helpful in helping you move forward from whatever you are feeling right now. And lastly, this is another technique that I have um, prepared for myself in the past years when I was going through a lot of uh, stress and trauma and uh, I felt that when you are triggered, you have to take action and you have to do something so that you can move forward from there. And I find this three-step exercise to be extremely helpful for that. And uh, it is very simple and I have also added that to that same Notion template. So it depends on what, which one you uh, prefer to use, whether it is CBT that you want to go with. It is that in the first step, you think about gratitude, being grateful about whatever happened to you. And even if it is a situation that seems to be painful for you, it is there is a lesson in it for you, right? And if you look at it from that source of that kind of um, perspective, you will see that you always have lessons to extract from every single situation. And simply by using, by changing your mindset towards this perspective, you then manage to move forward so much more quicker because you have learned to use every single situation and every single trigger to your own advantage. So the first thing that you are going to do here is to be grateful. After that, you are going to make a donation. And when I say donation, it can be anything like it can be something a little gift that you buy to your own kids it can be something that you absolutely like and that is close to your heart and you give it out to someone else who is more in need of that kind of uh, thing whether it is clothes whether it is any other thing that you use and if 
even if you like do not feel like you have something that you can give out there even a smile in itself is something that is so beautiful to give out there to people so smiling towards people is an act of kindness and that is it is all about the intention that you have behind whatever you are giving out so you i believe that you are never too poor to donate so you can donate anything that you have and this is the second step by donating by giving out you are actually giving and helping someone else and by helping someone else you are always helping yourself as well so not to, as an act of selfishness but instead as an act of uh, giving and as an act of donating and love and respect for other people this is the second step that you should take and after that you set yourself a challenge and in that challenge it is anything that helps you outgrow this situation this person that you were and who faced this trigger and who faced this situation so uh, what i do for myself sometimes i just set the goal of maybe reading a book maybe uh, starting a new habit which is good for myself maybe doing something else which uh, pushes me out of my comfort zone anything like that which helps me become a different person and uh, you are becoming a different person constantly of course when you are working on yourself and when you are taking steps to you know sort of move forward and learn new things and whatever you are doing so i find that this three step process is extremely empowering because no matter what the situation you are always coming out stronger and uh, that is the beauty of it so this is something that i wanted to share with you so feel free to use the notion template and uh, here i would just like to mention my previous video in which i interviewed adina violet who is a health coach for women and if you are facing any sort of imbalances related to your hormones or you have any questions related to your nutrition your diet you can definitely check out that video it is my previous video and i will leave a link towards that video in the description below and at the same time we also discussed about feminine energy like the divine feminine energy the process of trusting your own growth your own journey your own path so i found that to be extremely helpful as an interview uh, as a discussion as a call with her i loved that conversation that we had and i highly recommend that you watch it too and you can easily move towards the chapters that that uh, you need help with or that you are questioning yourself on so go ahead watch that video and now let's move on towards the five tips that i have for you to manage your stress in a better way so the first tip here is to put a physical distance between you and the source of your stress now it can be your phone for example you maybe you are spending way too much time on social media and that is creating stress in your head and you want to distance yourself from your phone so just leave your phone at home put it on plain mode and go outside take a walk go away from it and that is going to give you new ideas and you are going to be able to make sense of things way better you know and if it is related to work for example also uh, creating some distance and going back home and then thinking about that situation again later on just leaving it for that moment that is extremely helpful in dealing with your stress the next thing that is extremely helpful is creating routines morning evening and even your routines for your daytime breaks i have a personal like morning routine and things that i absolutely do every single morning is exercise meditation and journaling these are the three things that i do and of course along with shower which is very nice as well but uh, these these three things and they help me like start my morning in a way which is way more powerful and i know that i'm doing things for myself and after that i feel way more energized having such routines also gives a structure to your day and that really helps you in um having your mind which is a little more organized than if you just keep throwing different tasks at yourself and also uh, having an evening routine in which you allow yourself to wind down and just take some time and relax and get go, go to bed on time and when i was talking about routines related to your breaks for me it is selecting something for the week that i will be doing during my breaks so it can be like taking a break where i go for a walk 
or taking a break where I am doing some push-ups or taking a break to uh, do some vocabulary exercises on my phone. Even though I highly recommend that you have a self-care ritual, but if you are taking time within your routine every single day for yourself, you will feel way more energized and way more in charge of yourself and your emotions and your stress, of course. And that brings me to the next tip, which is music. You can never underestimate the power of music because whether it is some kind of a powerful music or some spiritual sounds depends on what you are feeling listening to in that moment. But it is always a good idea to have a playlist that is dedicated to yourself and that you can go to words and listen to whenever you are feeling like you are overwhelmed by the number of things that are happening around you and it helps you calm down and that also brings me towards the next tip which is spirituality and like related to music but spirituality in itself it is the act of believing in the fact that there is a higher power and that you are part of this universe and you are actually a small part of this universe and we are all moving forward together and uh, it is a process and you are part of this process and you just have to trust the process for yourself even if today you are in a situation which is maybe not ideal for you you can completely trust the process and allow yourself to move forward with it and lastly having self-belief belief in your own capabilities to deal with the situation no matter what kind of situation you are facing and that is absolutely beautiful because once you start trusting yourself it is as if you didn't need validation from anyone or any situation anymore and uh, this is something that i will be talking about also in the future in a video uh, related to dealing with rejections because we do face rejections every single day as well but only believing in the fact that i am capable of dealing with this situation no matter what it is and i am entirely in charge of myself simply when you accept complete responsibility and you accept that you are completely in charge of the situation in that time you will be able to move forward so much better so these were the tips that i wanted to share with you and in order to build the self-belief what you can use is also affirmations what you can use is also a vision board and these things are going to make you feel like you are way more in charge of yourself even if you do not have that belief right now you can build it by listening to affirmations by creating a vision board for yourself and uh, and for me it is also music like some kind of some songs my own playlist that i listen to and that brings me a lot more confidence than i would have otherwise without music so i hope that these tips have been helpful to you to now start uh, handling your anxiety and your stress in a better way and i hope that you are going to also build your own coping kit so that you can deal better with your anxiety stress and even depression in those times of like the fall that is approaching and that i absolutely adore to be very honest it's at the time of the year when you can go inwards and you can just reflect on every single thing that you did and uh, I love that time of the year. So even though you are someone who do not like that, start creating your coping kit right now. And I hope that these tips are going to help you. Let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to my channel. And I will be happy to see you in my next video, hopefully. Until then, keep excelling. Bye.